Ni hao, it's Diane Neubauer, or Du Yanzi. I wanted to talk about opinion dictation, uh, or opinion tingxie, um, and the way that I did that in classes. Um, the reason that I would use this activity is because I wanted to check on my students' opinion spelling. Occasionally in the past, I would use this because it was a very structured activity, and I could make students really focus on listening to understand one sentence at a time um, in classes that got a little unruly. Occasionally this was useful for that as well. But mainly, in the long run, what I found was it was a good way for me to check on their pinyin spelling and diagnose ways that I wanted to show them pinyin again and kind of pop up or ask quick questions as we're doing reading and discussion of a reading text that was in Chinese characters, I would pop up a question and say, oh, a woman zemapin jaika. And I would ask them, like, how do you spell this word? To double check and reconfirm, ah, so xiao is always spelled x-i-a-o, for example. So this was a way I could help to build their pinyin recognition and their pinyin spelling even though I didn't give them reading material in pinyin. That would be another way to do it. I did reading that was pretty much all in characters. So um, as a result, their pinyin development was a little bit stunted. So this was one way I tried to overcome that. So this is how the structure of the pinyin tingxia would be. I just had them use notebook paper on the first line. They would write their own attempt at the pinyin for the sentence. So, for example, let's say I said the sentence 我开车去饭馆 I'd repeat that maybe three or four times. I was kind of soft. I would let them ask again if they were not sure after three or four times. Um, so you can decide how, how strict you want to be about that. Um, they would write down the pinyin. I'd encourage them to try and use tone marks as well as correct spelling. Um, but this line is not going to be graded, so there is no high stake for getting this one wrong. I want to see what they do here, though. I want to see that line and have them not make any changes to this line, because this is the line that tells me the information I really want, the, the information about where is their spelling now, what words do they need to see more of um, in the future, so that they get it right when they want to type their compositions in, in character script. Then the second line comes much later. So as we're doing the exercise, I say the first sentence, they write down that pinyin, um, they skip a line because they're going to do this afterwards. This is the line that I'm actually going to grade at the end. Um, there are some optional lines and I sometimes required them. They would write, and usually I had them do the English meaning of the sentence on the third line of their paper. On the fourth line, I would usually make this one optional. They could write the Chinese characters for the same sentence um, from their memory. See how they do. And then a final one, let's say I had a lot of time. Somebody only needed to hear that sentence once. They're super speedy and they're waiting for their classmates. Waiting for classmates is a time when students are prone to start talking in English or getting disruptive or getting bored or sighing loudly or something like that. So you want to give them something that's productive and enjoyable to do. So I, I would allow them to use a character memory aid, like a, a sheet that had characters with their opinion written down, and they could hunt out the characters that they knew they wanted to write the sentence in characters. Um, but that was rarely needed. So this would be number one on their page. It's five lines, maybe. Usually I only had these top three lines. So they'd write the first sentence, they'd skip a line, they'd write the English, and then once we got all of those, um, we would go on to number two. So uh, some students would get more characters than others. When they could get to the character line, it was helpful for me because once again, I was seeing which characters are they already retaining. This activity was more commonly done in my level one classes. So that was really helpful to see what characters were starting to stick in their memory so well that they could handwrite it from memory. So we did number one, we do number two. Again, they hear a new sentence, like for example, and they write that whole thing out in pinyin, again, trying with the tones, 
the tone marks. Um, and then they're going to skip that line. Maybe they're going to have a third line where they write the English meaning. Um, and we go on to number three. I never did more than five sentences. Here's an example of a student's finished sentences. This is just with pinyin and then their corrected pinyin. So we didn't even do the English on this time. So um, when I'm grading, I'm looking at the second line here. 我看到了熊猫宝宝. Why could this student correct these? I wrote them on the whiteboard afterwards. And what I found amazing was students thought this was like a game last year. They thought it was cool because they were like, oh, I only missed one. Oh. You know, but they weren't discouraged about that. They were like, hey, I got five of the tone marks right in that sentence, and they were excited. So they felt this sense that, wow, I can do more than I think, you know, and, and so that was great. Uh, generally, at least, I heard that kind of feedback. Um, usually students, even when they had a lot of spelling errors, were making progress as the year went by, and so they could see progress that way, if not right then. So um, this, this student's got xiong. Um, correct. Interestingly, over here with xiao, they had some trouble. So I would make a mental note or even written note on my planner for the next day in class. I would sh I would maybe say the word and ask them again, how do you spell xiao? And see if we get x-i-a-o or if we still have somebody thinking s-h-o-u. Um, so, and then I might even contrast. So I might say, ah, so this is show, uh, like to receive. And that's xiao, like small, so we can contrast it. Again, why be picky about spelling? Because in Chinese, if you want to type, you need to have correct spelling in pinyin. Pretty close. You can make some errors, but you have to make it errors like a native speaker's errors to get the correct characters to pop up. So that's not really likely to happen with American students. So they need pretty solid pinyin. So, um, Let's see, when I'm grading then, I'm looking at this second line, and, and you'd think, oh, well, they're all going to get five out of five. They're all able to see on the whiteboard the correct pinion with all the tone marks up there. Uh, you might be surprised. Let's see if this student, ah, they skipped a tone mark on do. So that's a real minor thing. Here's kan, looks like they skipped a tone mark there. So I think, hmm, one point per line. And I would grade this one as like um, probably 0.8, something like that. They almost completely got every little detail, but because they didn't make mental note there, oh, do and kan are up on the board with tone marks now, and they didn't write it. So uh, one of the things you see here is they're doing capital letters and lowercase letters in a funny way compared to standard pinyin. That's um, a, an approach I used um, from... Terry Waltz, she calls it top, I think, tonally orthographic pinion. So it has some capital letters as well as the tone marks and then also colors. But um, I did not require them to write the pinion with that, that uh, capital letters in lowercase, but some of the students did when they were copying from, or you know, writing their corrected version. So um, suggestions again, keep it to no more than five sentences make them easy to understand and interesting. Um, so this is not a time to be tricky about meaning, but making it kind of quirky could be good. Um, grade the lines that they self-corrected after seeing a model of the correct opinion up on a, a board or a screen somewhere everyone could see. Give them time to, to grade it. That's another time you want your fast finishing students to be working on writing the lines in the English meaning, the characters, without looking at a a help sheet, and then maybe uh, using a, a character memory aid to help. And then make it easy to grade for yourself. Uh, one point per sentence worked well for me. I just estimated out of percentage correct based on the tones, tone marks and the spelling. So it was five points total. There were five sentences. And then use those results. This is why you're doing this, not just for some kind of a contained classroom management thing, but uh, which is legit. You, you need that sometimes when you're teaching. Uh, but you want to use the results to help them see those pinyin again so that their spelling will progress and grow. And then uh, you can pop them up during reading too. Like if you noticed five students had trouble spelling xi huan in a dictation, I'm going to ask it next time we see it in reading. Say like, oh, 怎么拼 xi huan? 
and then I write it on the whiteboard so they're hearing it because somebody will say how to spell it and then they'll see it on the whiteboard because I'll write it again so try to keep flooding that that pinion spelling out though.